everybody, this is Paige from Mosaic Moments, and today I am doing a tutorial of the five square blocking die set. So with this set, you can build a five by five block square on the grid paper and create pages such as the one I'm going to be making today. So this is a really fun one and it's actually a very easy die set to use. All right, let's go ahead and get started. All right, first I am going to introduce you to dies that come in the five square blocking set. It has nine dies all together. One of them is a rectangle shape and that largest rectangle there fits half of a five by five block. And it also comes with that layering size. There's also three different squares. The largest one, you could fit up to four of those in a large square or in the five by five square. And it also comes with two layering sizes. This set also comes with four triangle pieces. The largest one would fill up half of a five by five square. And then you have this smaller triangle to fill in the corners. So it'll fill in that square shape. It also comes with two layering sizes. So that's quite a bit of dies in this set and you may be confused already on how this works. But no worries, I am going to give you some ideas on how you could use these. All right, so I have a piece of cardstock here that was cut with the five by five die from set A. You can get that in the basic bundle and you can put at least four or the most four of these on the grid paper. So you could fill up the whole page with these dies if you wanted to. This tan piece here was cut with that rectangular piece. And as you can see, it fills half of the space. So you could put two of those in a square like I'm doing here. So that's one option. You could also fill this space with four squares or even have half of it with the rectangle. And then the other half be two squares, just like here. All right, and then you have these triangular triangle pieces and so you could have a square and then those two little triangles below it and it'll fill that space so that's what's fun about this set is you can be really creative and build your square in so many ways and as mentioned before there's also these triangle dies so as you can see the largest triangle pretty much fills half of this five by five square space and then you can kind of see the little two well you can see the two triangular spaces next to it so right now i'm putting another larger triangle below it and it makes one big diamond shape together and then there's this smaller triangle die so you can cut these smaller pieces to fill in the rest of the square space. All right, now that I have given you some ideas and introduced you to the dies, let's get started with the demo. So this first step is optional. I am going to cut a couple of pieces with the five by five square die that is in set A. And I do recommend using this if this is your first time using the die. And I especially recommend it if you're using the triangle pieces because it'll be easier for you to figure out where each piece needs to go. All right, so next I, I'm gonna have two kind of diamond shapes on my layout using the triangular dies. So here I have, I'm using the largest triangle to cut my very first photo here. So you do wanna decide beforehand if you want the triangles to go horizontally or vertically. For my layout, I wanted them to go horizontally because I have a lot of landscape photographs. And my first photo, as you saw, the triangle was pointed down, but this one, the triangle is pointed up. And I'm gonna be using a mix of the bigger triangle and the smaller triangle today, just to mix things up and show you different options. All right, now roll through the die machine. Here I am using a crease pad because I'm cutting a photograph and that helps you not get that little indent you may get whenever you cut your photographs. All right, next I'm using the smaller triangle. This isn't the smallest triangle. The smallest triangle in set is a layering piece for this size. So I guess it's the second smallest <laughs> triangle in the set. And I did carefully plan my photographs beforehand to know which direction I wanted the triangle cut to go. So that's what I'm doing with each piece here. And I carefully planned it to make sure my subjects could fit within that space. So you notice, I personally like don't like cutting people. So I try to make sure they're small enough in the photograph to 
fill in that space so I'm not cutting them in an awkward way or decapitating them. <laughs> we don't want that, right? And again, I made sure that the small triangle was going in the direction I want it. So again, you want to pre-plan. Again, these triangle pieces are the trickier ones because they may be going in all sorts of different directions versus the rectangular. You only have vertical or horizontal and then there's the square, which is just a square, right? All right, this next triangle is done. So in case it wasn't clear already, I obviously did pre-plan my photographs beforehand so I do know which direction they need to go. So if you're not understanding that, I will be showing the example in a little bit here. So, and this is just one idea. I'm doing kind of more complex cutting today. So you may not want to do this many cuts with the small triangle, but you will need a small triangle to at least fill out the out outer corners, which I'm going to show in a second. All right, I have my last little triangle photo here. And now I'm going to cut my paper with that same size triangle and all of, so I decided to use pattern paper to fill in each corner. Oh, I messed up here. Sometimes this is why it's handy to use washi tape, by the way, so that does not happen. <laughs> so do as I say, not as I do, I guess. <laughs> anyway, I have my pattern paper here. And again, I have the kind of pattern paper here where I wouldn't want it to be sideways or upside down. So you may have to pay attention to which direction your triangle is going when you cut the pattern paper as well. All right, I just used my repositionable glue here to cut the back of my first five by five square, which takes up a quarter of the layout. So these are very big squares. And the nice thing about the set is you actually get to do something with them. This is a very large size and we don't use it very often. At least we don't hear at mosaic moments. Sometimes it's nice to have a large piece of pattern paper and your photo on top. It kind of has this nice frame look and you can add some journaling on the size block. But with the five square, blocking die set, you're able to make fun little designs within the space. And here I have the two squares diagonally. So you could just have two squares on a layout or have four squares on a layout, which I am going to do today. All right, and you can see here I'm filling in the space. And with the triangle ones, I did try, because I know some of you don't want to waste cardstock, I did try just laying the triangles right on the grid paper. And one of the other design team members had a lot of luck with that, but I didn't. So that's why I decided to use the cardstock in the background. So if you're having trouble figuring out where each piece needs to go on the grid lines, I recommend getting some extra cardstock or use something like white that usually costs less money to have that large background piece because I find it is easier with the triangular pieces here because otherwise it's a little bit tricky to line them up on the grid paper. But you see here how, I'm f how I filled in my space. I put the four corners in first and then I'm filling in the center so you could see that the large triangle fit right in that bottom half and now I'm filling in the rest of the space with these two smaller triangles. So you see I have many options here. You could fill the same space in with two large triangles here I use one large triangle and two smaller triangles. You could even have only half of it be a triangle and the top or bottom part could be a rectangle. So, so many options with this die set. It's very fun to play around with it. And I'm going to fill in this second space the same way again. I am filling it all in with these four pattern paper corners. Well, I guess right now I decided to <laughs> fill in the top already with my photograph here. I'm going to fill the next two bottom corners. Really you can build it however is easiest for you as long as you know where to place it on your grid paper. And of course I'm going to fill in these bottom two with the smaller triangles here. All right so I got my first two blocks finished. Next I'm cutting my photograph with the rectangle die in the set. This is the largest one. There is a smaller one if you want to layer your photo over a paper mat. Of course I roll it through the machine and it's pretty easy. So with the rectangular 
a shape here. All you need to decide is if you want the photo to be cut vertically or horizontally. So you don't have to think about it quite as much. Here I wanted to fit in two vertical photographs. So obviously that's why my photographs are being cut in a vertical direction. All right, next I'm gonna be cutting my square background pieces. Super easy, you just need to get some cardstock or pattern paper. So this is the largest square in the set, by the way, so this will fill in the space along with my rectangle. I'm gonna use some washi tape here because I don't want those dots to uh, accidentally look diagonal or anything like that. Altogether, I'm gonna have four of these squares. So next, I'm gonna be cutting some photographs with the layering size. So this is the second largest square die in the set. So I'm using that to cut four different photos of pumpkin and squash. All right, so you can take your time. Again, if you need, use washi tape. I have a magnetic plate and I have <laughs> practiced with using the dye machines a lot. So I'm used to just kind of being able to not use the washi tape. But if you don't want your photo to look crooked, definitely use washi tape if you need it. All right, I have my last photograph here. I just love fall, don't you? I love when I can make pages with a lot of fall photographs. <laughs> all right, so that's my last square. And now I get to put it all on the grid paper. So this time I don't have that cardstock background because with these shapes, it's actually pretty easy to directly line them up on the grid. So what you wanna do is first line up whatever is going to be on the left side. So here that rectangle shape was on the left side so I can line it up in that top left corner. And as you can see on where the square is going, there is no left line. So if I started with the left side, it would have been a lot more difficult to try to figure out where to line it up. But I did start with that top square because I did have that line on top and then I just squished it directly next to the rectangle and then I filled in that rest of that space with that bottom square. And now I can put my photographs on top and you can just eyeball how, you know, when you feel it looks centered. Something to note about these dies is unlike pretty much everything else we do with Mosaic Moments, if you pay attention, if you're looking right now, there's no gaps between each of these elements, except for in between the square spaces. So there is going to be like a cross in the middle of the layout. So just now I did start putting these down on the left side again. I just started with that top square, followed by the bottom square, and now I can fill in the rest of that space with the photograph here. And again, you can see there's no gap between those two squares and the squares in the rectangle. So keep that in mind if you're frustrated because you're wondering where the gaps are, just keep in mind there's no gaps with this die set, except for the ones in the middle here that separate the five square, or excuse me, the four different squares here. All right, this completes today's demo. I hope you enjoyed watching it. And if you did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up to let us know that you enjoyed the five square blocking set. I know it's quite a name. <laughs> and also don't forget to subscribe so you can be updated on future tutorials. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.